Hello students, today we will begin with a new chapter and the name of the chapter is Transport and Communication. When we talk about transport or transportation, it is the movement of, it is the movement of human animals, human animals or goods from one location, from one place or from one location to another. So one more time when we talk about transportation or transport is the movement of humans, animals and goods from one place or from one location to another. Moving on, let us talk about the modes of transport. There are different modes of transport. Modes of transport. There are basically the three basic modes of transport includes your land, land, water, land, water and air. So when we talk about firstly, when we talk about the first mode of transport, that is the land transport, it includes both roads and railways. The most common type of transport, that is the land transport, includes your roads and railways. Next, when we talk about the water transport, it includes your inland seaways and also the oceanic routes. So this could be inland seaways or the oceanic routes. Lastly, when we talk about the air transport, air transport operates on both national and international level. It operates on operates on both national and international. So these are your three main types or three main modes of transport. Firstly your land, then we have the water transport and thirdly we have the air transport. Now let us learn about these in detail. Firstly, let us talk about the land transport and under that let us talk about the rail transport. So when we talk about the rail transport, Indian railway system is the main artery of the country's inland transport. So the main mode of inland transport that we have in the country is the rail transport. Indian railway forms the lifeline of the country catering to its need for large scale movement thereby contributing to the economic growth of the country as well. One more time, when we talk about the rail transport, it is one of the most important modes of transport, especially when it comes to large scale movement of people and for long distances. Rail transport becomes really helpful. Through that, it also tends to bring about economic growth of the country. So when we talk about the rail transport, the first rail in India was started in 1853. So the first rail transport was started in the year 1853 between Mumbai and Thani over a distance of 34 kilometers. Over a distance of 34 kilometers between Mumbai and so this was the first rail transport that began in a country. Today, Indian Railways has grown into a large network making it the largest in Asia and the fourth largest in the world. So when we talk about the rail transport, the Indian Railways have progressed not only quantitatively in number but also qualitatively as well. Thus Indian Railway has improved a lot since the first year when it began 
Till date, it has progressed a lot, adding to the nation's economic growth as well. Moving on, now let us make a distinction between. Firstly, let us make a distinction between coach and player. The coach and player. So, when we talk about a coach, a coach is a carriage with a roof and seats used by railways to carry passengers from one place to another. Carry passengers from one place to another. One more time, when we talk about a coach, a coach is a carriage with a roof and seats used to carry passengers from one place to another. Indian Railway uses many types of coach. There are many types of coach in the Indian Railways. The first that we have is the first class coach, the second class coach, air conditioning, air conditioned coaches, etc. So we have the First class coach, second class coach, the air conditioned coaches, etc. Air conditioned coaches, etc. comes under the coach here. Other than that, we also have the sleeper coaches. The sleeper class, the sleeper coaches here also comes under your coach. Next, when we talk about a wagon, a wagon is a vehicle open or closed used by railways to transport heavy goods from one place to another. So it may be open or closed and it is used to transport, transport goods from one place to another comes under your wagons. So this is the basic difference between the coach and the wagon. Now let us make a distinction between the fair and the fruit. So when we talk about the fair and the fruit, first let us talk about the fair. When we talk about the fare, fare is the amount charged by the railways to carry passengers. Okay, so this is the amount charged by amount charged by the railways to carry passengers. Whereas when we talk about feet, Freight is the amount charged by the railways to transport goods and luggage from one place to another. This is also the amount charged by the railways to carry goods and to carry goods and luggage from goods and luggage from one place to another comes under your fleet. So this is the basic difference between the fair and the fleet. Moving on, let us now talk about the factors affecting railways. So, we will now talk about the factors affecting Railways. So when we talk about these factors, the pattern of Indian railway network has been influenced by geographical, political and economic factors. Geographical, political as well as the economic factors. These are the main factors affecting the Indian railways. Firstly, let us talk about the first factor that is the geographical factor. So, when we 
talk about the geographical factor, the North Indian plains presents the most favorable condition for the development of railways in our country as it has level land, high density of population and rich agriculture as well. One more time when we talk about the geographical factor, the North Indian plain. The North Indian plain basically shows a favorable factor or presents the most suitable conditions for the development of railways here. As it has high density of population, it has flat level land, it also has rich agricultural land which tends to favor the growth of railways in this region. Other than that, we also have, however, in case of this, there are also the presence of large number of railways which makes it necessary to construct bridges in case of these areas. Okay, construction of bridges which tends to involve heavy expenditure. So, construction of railways in the northern place is most favorable but due to the presence of rivers here, construction of Bridges becomes mandatory and the construction of these bridges tends to create a lot of expenditure for the railways. Other than that, there are particularly no railways in the flood plains of many rivers in Bihar and Assam. But we will also see that there are practically no railways in the flood plain region in the places of Assam and Bihar as well. Plateau regions of South India is not as much suited or suitable for the construction of the railways as in the North Plain region. North Indian Plain we find mostly the railways being concentrated in this region. But comparison to this, we do not find large amount of railways in case of the Plateau region. Whereas in case of the Himalayan region, in the north, it is almost entirely devoid of railways. So, for the plateau, plateau region, we do not find as much amount of railways as in case of the northern place, as it is not as much suited. Whereas when we talk about the Himalayas, the railways here are practically absent. Basically because of the rugged topography. The rugged topography present here, the ups and downs present here makes it unsuitable for the construction of railways in this region. Now moving forward, let us talk about the economic factor. Let's talk about the economic factor. So when we talk about the economic factor, railways develop more in the economically advanced regions. So economically advanced regions or areas have more amount of railways where the need for railway network is felt more. One more time. In the economically advanced area, the need for railways is felt more, thus more amount of railways is found in these kind of areas. Consequently, railways bring economic prosperity to the areas through which they pass. So they tend to bring economic prosperity. Prosperity to the areas through which they pass through. Okay? Railways bring an important part, part of service sector which constitutes to nation's economic development directly as well as indirectly. So when we talk about the economic factor, it also tends to bring, railways tends to bring, bring employment, thus adding to the economic prosperity of the nation. Now moving forward, let us talk about the third factor that we have, which is the political factor. The political 
factor. Now, when we talk about the politi political factor and the administrative factor, the political and administrative factor, we see that the present railway system in India is the legacy of the British rule. The British administration planned the direction and pattern of railway lines in such a way that they could exploit the valuable raw materials of India for the benefit of the industries and flood the Indian market with the finished goods, goods that were brought that could be brought from Britain. So this was one of their technique of running the country. So this political factor, one more time, is the legacy, the railway that we have is the legacy left behind by the British rule, British system. So why did they make the railways line in that manner? In order to exploit the areas and bring the finished goods, the raw materials, taking the raw materials from our country and bringing the finished goods to our country to sell it. Besides, the Britishers wanted to maintain their military supremacy for which quick movement of troops and army was necessary and construction of railways became very very important. So these railways were maintained in such a way that their supremacy in case of the military factor would also be established. As we know that railways brings about quick movement. So this helped the transportation of the soldiers from one place to the other. Thus top priority was given to big ports of basically during that point of time more amount of priority was given to big ports of Mumbai, Kolkata and Chennai. The ports were connected with their hinterland by railway lines to facilitate the imports and the exports of the goods. So that the imports and the exports become easier, the railway lines were linked in that manner. It is from the ports that the railway network spread to the other parts of the country overall. So that becomes one of the political factors or the administrative factor that led to the growth of the railways in our country.